I still don't get how this fight didn't happen. Stupid injuries, normal injuries, food, that just shouldn't happen. Five years and it didn't happen once. So right, if we look at their records when they both started, so yes, Tony Ferguson was in the Ultimate Fighter, but I'm talking about after the Ultimate Fighter. Let's look at the first five fights. Mike Rio, at the time, he was one and four in the UFC. This guy right here, Katsunura Kikunio, he was two and three in the UFC. Danny Castillo was seven and seven in the UFC. And Abel Trichudi Judigo, he was six and four and one. So you look at Khabib's record and you look at Tony Ferguson's record when they both started, they had quite similar competition. They didn't have any extremely hard fights straight away and they seemed quite reasonable. But I will say Khabib had to face adversity first. Like he had to have the harder fight first. He had to fight Rafael de Sanos, who was on a four fight winning streak going into this fight. And he was able to control him and wrestle him. And when Edson Barbosa fought Tony Ferguson, which I believe was his hardest fight today, I'm not gonna say Josh Thompson because I don't think he's as good as what some people say. He gets a lot of credit for just knocking out Nate Diaz, but that's about it in my opinion. And remember, Edson Barbosa, for some weird reason, shot for a takedown on him, and Tony Ferguson was able to defend against it, and then lock in that dash truck. I don't know what Edson Barbosa was thinking at that time, trying to take down a Tony Ferguson, who's already good at jiu-jitsu. Like, he won two of his last three fights by submission, so I don't know what Edson Barbosa, with no wrestling background, was doing, trying to shoot for takedowns. And also, to give Khabib his credit, remember, Rafael de Sanos, this was a prime Rafael de Sanos. But when Tony Ferguson fought Rafael de Sanos, I think he was kind of in his prime, but he wasn't like the main prime he was like against Khabib. Because before that Eddie Alvarez fight, he was on a five fight winning streak and it's like Eddie Alvarez ended it all. And ever since then in the UFC, he hasn't been as consistent in terms of winning as before. But, but you could say that's obvious because he's going to fight harder opposition as he fights more in the UFC. It's just going to happen and he's in the lightweight division. But when you look at Khabib's last five fights before he would have fought Tony Ferguson at UFC 249, you look at the opponents and none of them come close to Tony Ferguson in type of like style. And it's not about MMA math, but I had to bring up these resumes before to give you an idea of the type of fighters they've faced in the career so you can kind of get an idea of what you would think would happen when these two fought each other. So Michael Johnson against Khabib. Again, that is not a good matchup for someone like Michael Johnson. Yes, you could say he's got good takedown defence because you think about that Mark Jacesi fight recently. But at that time, he's a pure striker, the most inconsistent fighter. You put him against someone like Khabib, highly IQ'd, very good at jiu-jitsu. He'll shoot for that double leg against the cage. And that's what he did. He controlled him. He started talking to him, battering him. And then you look at Edson Barbosa. Again, another striker with no threat of wrestling. You might say Edson Barbosa does because when you look back at that Tony Ferguson fight... He did try and shoot for some takedowns in that fight, but he's not a wrestler. I don't know what was going through his brain when he was thinking to do that, but nothing similar to Tony Ferguson. Ally Quinta, I believe that was a short notice fight, and he was just there so that they had a card. Like, no one thought Ally Quinta was going to win that fight, and look what happened. He didn't win the fight, he just got destroyed, and he somehow survived, so you have to give him credit for that. And I can't remember, I think it was the one where he said, are you booing me? That moment, I can't remember, I think it was that, it might not have been. And then we look at the Conor McGregor fight, but I will say this as well. Yes, Khabib was going to beat him, and I do think he would have at the time. Conor McGregor was coming off a loss to Floyd Mayweather in boxing, and then he goes to fight Khabib without even taking like a warm-up fight. I know you can't do warm-up fights in MMA, but after you've done that long training camp for boxing, there's going to be errors in like your game. But to be fair, he was doing well at stopping the takedowns, but again, nothing like Tony Ferguson. You're not going to see McGregor stop the takedown and look for like a dash choke. Or do anything like that. He was just trying to survive, defend against the takedowns, keep it on the feet and strike. And he was finding success in like moments in that fight, but nothing significant in my opinion. And then you look at that Dustin Poirier fight against Khabib, and it makes me think Tony Ferguson would have a grin on his face when he saw that like Khabib was doing well in that fight. He was winning the fight, but he shoots for a double leg, especially when Dustin Poirier is against the cage, and then we see Dustin Poirier lock up that tight guillotine choke. And he manoeuvres his way out. And I've said this before, I think. When you want to try and get a guillotine, you want to be strong. That submission, yes, it relies on technique. But there's a lot of strength that's involved with it compared to something like a triangle choke, which is easier to pull off. That's why it's hard to get guillotines. And especially on someone like Khabib, who's got a strong neck and a strong head, so he's able to get out of it. And then you look at Tony Ferguson's record going into the fight. 
So I've just talked about, yeah, he dominated Rafael de Sanya. It's not dominated because it was 3-2, but he did well on the feet. That was what I was impressed about. And Rafael de Sanya's carries a similar threat to Khabib. Not exactly like Khabib, but that's like a type of thing that Khabib would want to do. Get him against the cage and try and take him down from there. And then Kevin Lee again. So at this point, he's fighting guys who are testing him in the grappling area again. It's not like Khabib who's fighting at this point. Pure strikers with only that type of threat. He's not really fighting many wrestlers. Rafael de Sanos, yes, him. But apart from that onwards, it was just mainly strikers. Tony Ferguson had a mix of strikers, wrestlers, and jiu-jitsus. And I'm not talking about their first five fights in the UFC. I'm talking about when they're starting to fight harder opponents now. Because you see Kevin Lee again. Kevin Lee, he did all right in that fight. But he got submitted. Triangle choke. And then after that, we did see, yeah, Anthony Pettis and Donald Cerrone. And I will say at this point, they were aging. They were not the same type of fighters at this point. But to be fair, when he beat Donald Cerrone, he was on a three fight winning streak, but he was starting to become inconsistent. He'd win three fights in a row, then he'd lose one, then he'd win three fights in a row, then he'd lose one. And then when he fought Tony Ferguson, it all started going downhill. And when Anthony Pettis fought Tony Ferguson, he was three and two. So you can see... There's a trend with the fighters he's fighting at this point. Yes, you might say some of the fighters Tony Ferguson were beating weren't as good at that point, but I would disagree. Like Kevin Lee was 16-2. and two. Yes, Donald Cerrone and Antti Pettis, you might say, have finished, but he was on a 12-fight winning streak, and so was Khabib. And what I find strange about the Anthony Pettis and Donald Cerrone wins is they were both stoppages. Donald Cerrone, the eye injury hit after the bell. I do think Tony Ferguson probably would have ended up winning that fight. Anthony Pettis broken hand again. I think Tony Ferguson would have won that fight. So already what we're seeing is he is prepared to fight someone like Khabib. Although a lot of you will say he probably wouldn't win that fight. It's a weird matchup. It's crafty. Upward elbows. Tony Ferguson moving around the cage. You can see him getting taken down, being put on the back foot. But then Tony Ferguson, I think he'd be the first guy to make Khabib bleed. We'd hit him with so many upward elbows from the bottom position. Make it uncomfortable for Khabib. I don't think Tony Ferguson would be the type of guy like Dustin Poirier to catch him in a guillotine. And even if he did catch someone like Khabib in a guillotine, I don't think he'd make him tap. I don't think he's strong enough to do that. But a triangle choke is a scenario I could see happening. Like a lot of people are thinking Khabib would just go in there and ragdoll him. Yes, there is a very high chance that would happen. But I think we're forgetting Tony Ferguson would fight that fight, I think, the way how he fought against Rafael de Sanos. But the difference is, you've got to look at Khabib's control time and compare that to Rafael de Sanos. It's not the same. Khabib would eventually go to the ground, but what I could see happening is, yeah, he was ragdolling him. I don't know if he would submit him. And if you're going to say he would submit Tony Ferguson, I don't think Tony Ferguson would tap. I think the submission would be him passing out. And that's if he locked in a submission. Because you know Tony Ferguson's very crafty on the ground. And add the cardio as well. So say they get into the fifth round, which I don't think it would. And Khabib is mauling him on the ground. He's not going to give up. He's going to keep moving and try and get into different positions to make sure Khabib can't actually just smash him and finish him. And what annoys me a lot about this whole scenario is, of course this would happen. He fights Gaethje, he gets smashed unfortunately and then as soon as that fight ends in the exact same year oh for some convenient reason Khabib is able to fight Justin Gaethje and beat him you cannot make this up that's what I'm saying imagine if they fought at the same time and this is where Styles makes fights like Justin Gaethje is a different type of fighter Tony Ferguson in his entire career hadn't fought a fighter like Justin Gaethje yes I said he fought a lot of like jiu-jitsu guys strikers wrestlers but not this type of striker and a lot of the guys he was fighting would have set him up perfect for Khabib like let's say he fought someone like Dustin Poirier I'm not going to go into too much detail but that would be a weird fight to pick as well you might say that under pressure Dustin Poirier sometimes can fade like we've seen it that's why he hasn't got a title because unfortunately for him when he gets to like the closest part he will either get submitted or he might get finished or he might lose a decision so yeah, that's it. I do think Tony Ferguson probably would have lost to Khabib, but I don't think it would be as easy as some people think. I wouldn't think it'd be like a first round Khabib finish. No, I think this would go to like round three or round four and there would be a finish. And it would be either Tony Ferguson, I think, getting a triangle or 
Tony Ferguson somehow tries to strike on the feet and did what he does with Dos Anjos and get a decision. But if I'm honest with you, I don't think that would happen. It would be Khabib round one to round four, just smashing him. And then eventually Tony Ferguson's chin might not hold out because if you've got Khabib smashing you for five rounds almost on the ground, trying to attack for submissions, you're going to get cut. But then you could argue the career and resume of Tony Ferguson makes sense that he would put up a very good fight against Khabib. And in this, I'm not talking about like the first time when the fight would have been made, because if you're talking about all those times, there's so many different outcomes and scenarios that you could have said, because at that point, Tony Ferguson didn't fight all these type of guys. Like the first time they were booked to fight each other, he didn't fight Rafael de Sanyo, so we don't know how he would have fought against a highly skilled wrestler. That's why I'm talking about the UFC 249 when that event got made. Even though it didn't happen, it's based on that. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Talk to you soon.